Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So the basic criteria to obtain precipitation strengthening, let's talk about that, okay? or obtain precipitates, okay? So what are the criteria to obtain precipitate in a given system, right? So the one of the basic criteria is that the solvers line should decrease with decreasing temperature. Okay, I will explain this using phase diagram. Okay, this also means that decreasing Solid solubility as temperature decreases. Okay, so let's understand this with phase diagram. Okay, so let me draw a phase diagram now. Okay. So you have temperature here, okay? And let's see, let's say we have A and B is uh, on the other side. So you are going to have weight percent of B okay? increasing in this direction, okay? something like this. And somewhere here, say you have beta phase. Okay, and say you have liquid, this is alpha, so this is say alpha plus beta. And then this is also going to be two phase, which is alpha plus liquid. Okay, now uh, which one is the solvers line here? So this is your solvers line. Okay, and see what I wrote before. It says the solvers line should decrease with decrease in temperature. So this is a solvers line here. Okay, and you can see that this is decreasing with decrease in temperature. Okay. And this also means that the solid solubility, okay, of B in A is decreasing as you decrease the temperature, right? And you can clearly see here. So if say, if I take a temperature, let me change the color. So suppose I take the temperature of say T1 here, okay? And then uh, say T2 here. Okay, so T2 is less than T1, okay, and the solid solubility of B at a temperature of T2 is less than the solid solubility of B at a temperature of T1. That is what it means, okay. So if you have a phase diagram like this or a part of the phase diagram like this on the say left side or say right side also, whatever, okay. 
so uh, then in that case you can have form precipitates okay that, that is the one of the basic criteria to uh, to say whether a given system can form precipitates or not okay so the solver slice should decrease with the temperature okay now let's talk about uh, how do you form precipitate so this is the criteria but what steps you need to take to form precipitates okay so uh, say here in the phase diagram we have a say aluminum and copper right then b is copper so say a is aluminum and b is copper and we are going to use this aluminum copper system to explain some of the phenomena in precipitation hardening uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, you know lectures okay okay so let's talk about the steps now so you have three steps to form precipitates the first step is called solution treatment the second is called quenching okay? and the third is aging okay so these are the three steps you have to follow to obtain precipitates in aluminum alloys okay so if i draw a heat treatment cycle it is going to look something like this so you have a temperature on the y axis okay then you have uh, time on the x axis okay so for solution treatment let's change the color okay so it will be say something like this okay then you are going to quench it to some temperature then we're going to age it something like this okay so this is your cycle heat treatment cycle okay now so this is the top one so what you have to do you have to take uh, your sample you have to go to high temperature say in this case t not and i will use this nomenclature t not t1 t2 and use phase diagram and then explain it to you okay so this process here we call it as solution treatment okay so you are going to a temperature t1 uh, sorry t0 and then you are going to leave your sample for long time there at that particular temperature t0 then you are going to quench it so this second process here so this process here is called quenching okay so you are quenching it to say a temperature of t1 okay now after quenching you are going to again take the sample and then heat it to a temperature which is much below the solution treatment temperature say here this one okay to t2 and this process is called aging and then you subsequently cool it down after you leave it there for some uh, time okay so this is the overall process so we start with solution treatment then we go to quenching and then we age it okay we call it aging and thereby we are going to form precipitates in the given alloy system or given aluminum alloy okay so now let's understand this with respect to phase diagram 
okay and then i will also write the, the what we typically do in solution treatment trenching and aging okay so let's uh, okay let's first write down and then we will use phase diagram to understand this concept okay so solution treatment So what we are going to do, we are hitting the alloy. Okay. To a single phase region. To dissolve. any soluble precipitate i will explain all this okay just wait so we are hitting the alloy to a single phase region so that we can dissolve the precipitates okay now the next is quenching Okay. So after solution treatment, we are going to cool the sample okay, very rapidly. Okay. So cooling very rapidly to room temperature or lower. Okay, so, so room temperature or a slightly lower temperature so that we can obtain super saturated solid solution. Okay. And the last one is aging. So after you quench it, you have to age it. Okay. So here, so when we do solution treatment, I told you heating, we are going to do a T naught, right? I will use the phase diagram to explain this. Then cooling, we are going to do a certain temperature, which is say T1. And then aging, again, we are going to heat to a temperature of say T2, to form precipitates, okay? In this case, T2 to form precipitates. Okay. So these are the three steps we have to follow to form precipitates in aluminum alloy. Okay, so now let's use phase diagram and uh, try to understand this. Okay, okay. So let me draw. something like this, right? So you have temperature here, and then we are talking about A and B previously. So you have weight percent of B here, and somewhere here you have beta, right? So this is going to be alpha plus beta and this is your single phase region here right so if you see this region is your single phase region right and that is what i meant when i wrote here if you remember heating the alloy to a single phase region okay so we have to heat it to single phase region which is shown here just marked here right this region okay so the first step is solution treatment 
and what we are going to do we are going to heat it to a single phase region which is alpha here okay so let's heat it to a temperature of t naught and okay before that we have to choose some composition so let's choose this particular composition here okay having a concentration of c naught okay and then we are heating it to a temperature of say t naught okay which lies here in the single phase region so you had a sample which, which contained uh, you know two phase region beta also beta was also there right so what you are going to do you are going to heat the sample to a temperature of t naught and the composition of this alloy is this right so at that particular temperature and for this particular composition you are going to obtain a single phase region which is alpha okay and you have dissolved all the precipitates that's what i wrote also before right for solution treatment so if you talk about the microstructure you are going to see a microstructure at a temperature t not which will not have any precipitates okay so if it is a polycrystalline material you are going to have a microstructure like this so th this is your microstructure okay where you can see the drain boundaries and this all these are alpha right it's a single phase there is no phase other phase there is no beta phase we have dissolved all the precipitates in the alpha matrix to form a single phase alpha here and that is the purpose of doing solution treatment okay now the second so this is your solution treatment after solution treatment so i can write this is after solution treatment okay right now since you have dissolved all the precipitates the next step was to quench it right so you are going to quench to a some temperature say here t not a t1 right t1 okay so you have quenched it so you are now this is my composition line let me change the color okay? so this is your composition line okay now ideally if i am using this composition right you are at and and we are at temperature of uh, say t1 you are going you should form uh, precipitates right because this lies in two phase region alpha plus beta isn't it but since we are quenching it we are not allowing the solute atoms b atoms to go out we have not given sufficient amount of time for this b atoms to go out from the matrix to form beta phase okay so all the b almost all the b atoms are going to stay in the matrix and that's why we call it super saturated solid solution okay remember alpha is also a solid solution right so when we do solution heat treatment a uh, solution treatment we are going to form alpha which is a solid solution now when we quench it we are going to form super saturated solid solution which i also mentioned here okay so all the b atoms are inside the matrix and it is super saturated and that super saturation is given by this this difference okay now it is not in equilibrium condition because equilibrium condition is or phase based on the phase diagram i can say at equilibrium you are going to have alpha plus beta isn't it so b atoms would like to come out from the matrix okay so let me draw the microstructure so microstructure as such will remain same if we are in t1 okay so microstructure doesn't change much going to observe the same microstructure the only difference here would be that this is not going to be an equilibrium structure and b atoms is go, will try to come out from the matrix to form beta phase because that is the equilibrium structure so this microstructure is after quenching 
okay now if i leave the sample at room temperature and give sufficient amount of time like years right so what will happen this b atoms will come out and they are going to form beta phase okay but since uh, you know we want to do everything faster and if, suppose we are working in industry we cannot give years to form some you know precipitates right so what we do we heat it to a slightly higher temperature say t2 so what we are here t2 let me draw t2 here so this is your t2 okay so suppose we are heating to this particular temperature t2 so we heat the sample to a temperature t2 okay and then we are giving there some driving force right at higher temperature these atoms then quickly come out and starts forming precipitates in the matrix because the equilibrium structure suggests the microstructure should be having alpha plus beta okay so when we heat it what we are going to form is called precipitates so these are your drain boundaries what i am drawing now and then you start forming precipitates is something like this all these are schematics right okay so this is the microstructure at t2 after say aging okay and these blue ones what i have drawn are precipitates okay and uh, the remaining matrix is obviously is going to be alpha right so here we also have alpha so the microstructure here is alpha plus beta okay alpha is a solid solution of uh, b in a right and even after quenching your microstructure is going to have only alpha but it is super saturated okay and uh, this uh, uh, after solution treatment it is going to have only alpha i told you already okay so this is how we do uh, aging treatment right so we start with solution treatment we dissolve all the precipitates prior precipitates and we form a single phase right uh, alpha so in this case alpha right single phase for this region okay this then we quench it and we form super saturated solid solution where given a chance if you give sufficient driving force b atoms will come out from the matrix and they will form precipitates because the equilibrium diagram or phase diagram suggests the microstructure should be alpha plus beta right so what we do we do aging treatment okay so we go to a sufficiently higher temperature slightly higher temperature and then we heat it there to form precipitates okay which is beta here in this particular phase diagram okay now the aging treatment i mentioned right before that you can after quenching you can leave it at room temperature and give you know sufficient amount of months and years right so and when this happens and you form precipitates the process is called natural aging okay so naturally your material your aluminum alloy is going to age so we call it natural aging you are not going to put your sample in the furnace you are not going to apply external heat to it okay so that is called natural aging that means no external heat it is going to happen or formation of precipitates is going to happen naturally
But when we heat it in the furnace, we are applying some external heat. We call it artificial aging. That means we are supplying some external heat, okay? So that precipitates can come out from the matrix much faster, okay? So applying, giving external heat. That means, say, heating in the furnace, okay? Okay, so this is how we do aging treatment. Okay, and this is the process by which we form precipitates in the matrix. Now, these precipitates are going to interact with uh, dislocations. Also, these precipitates, you know, are going to change its characteristic in terms of size and interfacial boundaries as we age it or we give uh, more amount, more time. Okay, so with respect to time, the nature of the boundary of precipitates and size, they change. So we will discuss that now. Okay.